One question I get asked a lot from electricians is if you have multiple different buildings, are you supposed to put ground rods at each one of your buildings? The answer is yes. Well, no. Sometimes, let's break into it. All right, so I got a good question from a guy named Jason Fish. So Jason, I already answered your question, but I figured I would make a video out of this because it was really good. Um, he said basically that he's got a building um, and he uh, is adding another building and he's putting a, a 100 amp sub panel on this metal building. And so he was asking, do I need to actually put a ground rod and then how do I do the whole bonding thing? Are you supposed to bond your neutral and ground at each building? Um, so let's break into that. I thought it was actually a really good question. So up here, I have two different buildings wired together. Down here, I have like the actual pieces of electrical equipment that I just kind of blew out so I could draw uh, and talk about both of them. If we have uh, building one over here and building two, this is in uh, 250.32 in code if you're in 2017 or if you're in 2020 code, covers basically separate buildings, uh, whether or not it's branch circuit or feeders that are feeding it. So the difference would be, if you are sending a branch circuit over to this building, that means you're just sending like basically a 12.2 over for like a plug inside the building and there's no other power. You would consider that a branch circuit. And so in that case, we do not have to put a ground rod. So the code ref for that is is 250.32, that's buildings or structures supplied by feeders or branch circuits. So it does say in part A, grounding electrode, a building or buildings or structure or structures supplied by a feeder or feeders or branch circuit or branch circuits shall have a grounding electrode system and grounding electrode conductor installed in accordance with part three of article 250, where there's no existing grounding electrode, the grounding electrodes required in 250.32. 50 shall be installed. So we're assuming this metal building over here doesn't already have a U for ground or a ground that is concrete encased. There's not some other ground rod or something like that. It's just a new environment. So the exception that it says under part A is the important part to note. It says a grounding electrode shall not be required where only a single branch circuit, including a multi-wire branch circuit, supplies the building or structure and the branch circuit includes an equipment grounding conductor for grounding the normally not current carrying metal parts to equipment. So if you just have a branch circuit that you're going over there to, that's one thing. You don't have to worry about doing that or, or getting a concrete encased electrode because it's just a branch circuit. If you have a panel that you're putting over here and you're going to be running branch circuits out of that panel, then what you have running in between here is a feeder and the rules for that is slightly different. So that. For that, we would go to part B under grounded systems. Grounded systems supplied by a feeder or branch circuit. An equipment grounding conductor as described in 250.118 shall be run with the supply conductors and be connected to the building or structure disconnecting means and to the grounding electrodes. So they're saying with a feeder that we've got run over here, we're gonna run an equipment grounding conductor with our black, white, and red when we feed it over here. And that's going to connect to our main disconnect. It's gonna connect to the ground rod that it says that we have to install in this case because we're running a feeder. It's gonna have to uh, uh, tap onto the actual building steel as well, and it's gonna have to tap into the actual panel, but we'll get to that here in a second. The equipment grounding conductor shall be used for grounding or bonding of equipment, structures, or frames required to be grounded or bonded. That's the purpose of running the equipment grounding conductor. It has nothing to do with you know, line surges or trying to get lightning, uh, you know, minimizing voltage for lightning. That's what a ground rod does. So it's saying the green conductor, the ground that you run in between these buildings is meant to bond all of this equipment, not ground it in uh, like we would use on a grounding electrode. Um, then the equipment grounding conductor shall be sized in accordance with 250.122. Yes, any installed grounded conductor or neutral shall not be connected to this equipment grounding conductor or to the grounding electrode or electrodes. So there we go. It just gave us all of the information for what we're talking about. It's saying that we are going to be running a black over to the disconnect. We're gonna have a panel inside. We're gonna be running out of that disconnect to the panel. We're gonna have our red coming out of our service, going to our disconnect. We're gonna have the red going over to the panel. We're going to have our white. Sorry, probably should have pre-drawn all of this. And that white is going to touch the other white. It's not gonna be hooked up to a breaker where it's gonna be disconnected when you turn a handle or anything. 
It's gonna be hooked up straight to that neutral and that's gonna go into the panel as well. Then we're gonna have our equipment grounding conductor, which is what it said. You have to run an equipment grounding conductor in between the buildings up to that disconnect. That equipment grounding conductor is not going to get hooked up to that neutral or that grounded conductor, but it is going to tap into the ground that goes into the panel. So what we're also going to have to do is we're gonna to have to make sure that this is attached to the grounding electrode that we just ran, that's what we just read. And on this side, we're gonna be connected on our green down to our grounding electrode. So everything seems fine, seems normal now. The only thing that we haven't talked about is the bond between ground and neutral on this side. So you're only ever going, even if you have like 10 buildings that you're doing this with, if it's all supplied by one, service it's not separately derived you don't have like wind power over there and like solar over there and a transformer over here and a generator over there those are all separately derived systems so this doesn't in, those are different cases and that's actually in 250.32 as well if you look up separately derived systems and how to ground in those instances for grounding electrodes. But for here, we notice we've got the building steel hooked up to the green, we've got the ground rod hooked up to the green, we've got the disconnect, the panel, everything metal hooked up to green. Green goes all the way back, hooked up to green, hooks up to our ground rod. The only thing that's different is here in the service, we take our white and we touch it to our green. So everything is bonded at that point. That way, if there's ever a ground fault and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, our, you know, like a, a, a green or like a piece of metal or something like that came in contact with an energized conductor, like a black one. Now we have a complete loop because we're getting back to our neutral up top so that there's a complete circuit. The only way that we can make current flow is if we complete a circuit. And this, all this green stuff is never a part of our circuit. All metal and everything we hook a conductor up to at a grounding, or a, a, yeah, a grounding conductor, just in case something happens and we have an energized conductor that comes in contact with metal, it's around electrical equipment, we want it to momentarily become energized and complete a circuit so that it, when power goes through here, it gets up to the transformer through the neutral because it is tied to the neutral back here. So now this black through the ground, through the neutral, back to the black actually has a complete circuit. And it's gonna be so much current flowing because there's no impedance, there's no like resistances or motors or any loads that it has to go through. It's a quick, immediate, large amount of current that's gonna flow, and so much so that it's gonna take the magnetic contacts of any breaker that's hooked up and it's gonna rip them apart and it's gonna turn that breaker off. That's what we do when we open a circuit. We basically pull magnets apart that are holding the breaker in the on position and it turns that, that breaker off. So you will bond at your service. You'll run a equipment grounding conductor with your feeders, hook up to the disconnect. From there, hook the disconnect up to the panel, but keep your neutrals and your ground separate. And yes, every building or structure that we run to, that we run feeders to, we do have to have um, a grounding electrode run to them. Now there's some cases where uh, maybe running light poles in an authority having jurisdiction in AHJ in code will require that you put ground rods in light poles. There's some debate on whether or not that actually does anything and you're not running feeders. A light pole is still a structure. It's not a building. Um, but it is a structure that you're running power to. So should we be putting ground rods in the bottoms of them or not? You got this tall metal thing sticking out of the ground. So likelihood of it getting struck by lightning, you know, is there. So a lot of people will put a ground rod there, but a ground rod actually limiting the amount of touch potential or step potential or anything like that. Um, that's just not the purposes of it. So uh, we, a lot of people will put grounds in their light poles. A lot of people will put grounds on any kind of sign or anything like that. When I say put grounds, I mean they'll put a grounding electrode um, in the earth just for that purpose. It doesn't have anything to do with clearing a fault or a short. That's what the equipment grounding conductor that you run from the breaker out to that piece of equipment does. But if you don't have the equipment grounding conductor, you can't just stick a ground rod in the earth and expect that to trip a breaker. It's not going to because there's no way for a circuit to be complete. And in code, you can't use earth as a circuit when you're talking about grounding conductors because you need a low impedance path from the load back up to the source. And low impedance means there's nothing in the way. And earth is full of different minerals and salt and rocks and all kinds of stuff. So it's really not a good conductor for equipment grounding purposes. So you don't use that to complete a circuit. There's actually videos out there of people that have hooked a breaker up and they put a ground rod in the earth and they run 
a, a, a wire down to it and they detect how much current is flowing and there's actually current flowing on it very 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 small amounts but it's just gonna sit there and have current going through it it's not actually gonna trip a breaker because there's not enough current because there's not a low impedance on the circuit a low enough to allow a massive amount of current to flow so it's not going to trip a breaker and there's not a completed loop from the panel through the breaker down to the ground rod and back up to the transformer where that massive amount of current is going to be generated. So that's not gonna happen. So every kind of structure that you are running feeders to, unless there is specific equipment or anything in code, or you have a separately derived system, maybe a generator or something, and Generac says, like, yeah, you have to put a ground rod here and do this thing. Or if you have a automatic transfer switch and you're, you know, the, the neutral is actually being broken by that automatic transfer switch. Like there's a lot of different situations that we would do different things, but just know in general for like 90% of the work that you're doing out there if you have a shed that you're building or a metal barn somewhere or you're on a commercial property and there's like five different buildings yes you need to put grounding electrodes and usually on like a new site we're just going to use the concrete right we're going to take a, 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 a properly sized grounding electrode conductor and we're gonna run that down to the actual rebar, the actual steel that's going in the concrete. And we're gonna fully embed that in completely surrounded with concrete. And that was gonna be our grounding electrode. And it's really important to note, you still do have to hook your building steel, the actual frame of this massive metal building. You have to tie that to all of this. So um, hope that helps clear up some things. Leave some comments down below if you think I'm full of haberdashery. I don't even know what that word means. So he told me it's like a hat store. I always thought haberdashery was kind of like malarkey. That's malarkey. That's haberdashery. What is this haberdashery? That's how I use it. Anyways, uh, leave your haberdashery below. Love you crazy fuckers. See you in the next one. Are we not gonna talk about the fact that I didn't use any of this? This whole drawing? Nobody's gonna say anything? Nobody's gonna like raise their hands and mention that I didn't even use half the drawing that I drew? Haberdashery!